We've taken a look at LRAM and RRAM as techniques for approximating area under areas under curves. Here we're going to look at MRAM, which is midpoint rectangular approximation method. So the way this works is you're still going to break up your your interval into subintervals, um, whatever size you want, or whatever amount number of subintervals you you want. But this time um, we're going to let the midpoint of the subinterval determine the height of the rectangle. Whereas in the in LRAM and RRAM, we use the left hand endpoint and the right hand endpoint as ways of determining the height of the rectangle. For midpoint, you're going to use the the midpoint. So here we'll do MRAM three. So that means we're going to use three subintervals again of equal length. And again, I know it's obvious, but just to write the length of each subinterval. We can compute by taking our subinterval our, our full interval, three minus zero is the length of that interval, and we're dividing it up into three, so each has a length of one. So here's my first subinterval. Now what we do is this time is we let the midpoint of that subinterval, which is a half, that determines the height of the rectangle. So see how I went up to the up to the graph using my x value of one half. So MRAM three is going to be f of a half times the length of the the base of the rectangle. With the length of the base is one. On my next subinterval, I go to the midpoint of one and two, which is three halves and that determines the height of my rectangle. So that's adding f of 3 halves times 1. And then finally, we use the midpoint of the third subinterval, which would be 5 halves. So that would be f of 5 halves times 1. And so if we compute these out, um, it's the function's x squared, so it would be 1 fourth times 1 plus 9 fourths times 1 plus 25 fourths times 1. And that gives a total of 10 fourths, 35 fourths, which ends up being 8.75. So that's probably a better technique, and you can kind of see it in the picture here. It's better than the L, than LRAM or RRAM um, individually because you can see on each subinterval we are we're getting a little bit too much area at least on this left side, but then we're not getting the rest over here, and so that effect that you know th those two um, errors might might balance each other out on each subinterval. Right, we're getting too much area here, but then we're not getting enough over here, and so those those they're not going to be exactly the same because the function might you know be a little bit different. But on average, we should expect that MRAM's going to uh, accommodate uh, accommodate the over and underestimating on each subinterval and lead to a more uh, refined answer. All right, so there's MRAM. So we've got LRAM, RRAM, and MRAM. Those are three of the rectangular approximation methods that you'll want to know how to apply. Later we'll see that there are other techniques that are even better, but um, rectangle, rectangles are a good place to start.